In this video, we're going to learn about path parameters in FastAPI, and we're going to see how to create two endpoints, one for returning a list of data and one for returning an individual object. And we're also going to see how we can use type hints in these path parameters, and also how we can limit the path parameter of values to a predefined set using a Python enum. So let's dive in. We have the code from the last video here where we created two very simple API endpoints. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a hard-coded list of bands and we're going to use bands and that's similar to a recent video I did on Lightstar. We're going to use the same structure here where we have a list of Python dictionaries and each of these Python dictionaries represents a band and they have an ID, a name and a genre. Later on, we'll convert these to Pydantic models but the purpose of this video is to create two endpoints, one to return all of the bands and another one to return an individual band by its ID. So let's remind ourselves of the setup just to reinforce how to create a fast API application. We import this fast API object and then we instantiate that to create an object that we're calling app. And that app object can be used as a decorator when you create your handler functions in FastAPI. So what I'm going to do at the top here in this first function is I'm going to rename the function and we're going to call it bands. And we're going to change the path that we're using in this endpoint to slash bands and that is conventional in REST APIs. We have an entity, in this case a band, and if we want to get all of them in a list, then we're going to define an endpoint with the slash bands name in this case. And what this is going to return is the bands list that we defined above. This is the list of dictionaries, and we need to change the type hinting here for this endpoint. So what we're going to return is a list of dictionaries for now. Again, later we'll use Pydantic models. Once we've done that conversion, what we're going to do is on the terminal here, I'm going to start the server with the unicorn main app command, and I'm going to add the dash dash reload flag, and that will restart the server whenever we make any changes in the code. Once the server is running, we can go to localhost 8000 on the browser and we get this message not found. And that's, of course, because we need to add slash bands to that. We change the path that's being used here. And then we get all of the bands that were in this list of data that we had here. Let's now change the other endpoint. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a path parameter here in order to fetch a single band by the ID that's passed in in that path parameter. Now, again, this is quite similar to that recent video I did on Lightstar. And if you want to compare the two frameworks, you can check that out and it should be appearing on the screen now. Let's go to the documentation for Fast API, and we're going to see how we can declare this path parameter. If we look at this decorator here, you can see that the path we have contains slash items and then a slash. And then we have a variable here within curly brackets. This is a path parameter and you give the path parameter a name in this case it's called item id and that's then passed into the handler function as a parameter so let's do the exact same thing in our handler function this is the second one we're going to change this one from slash about and if we want to fetch a single item in a rest api typically we have the entity name which is slash bands and then if it's a single item we have some kind of dynamic parameter here and we use the path parameter for this and i'm going to call it band ID. We can then take the name of that variable that we're using and we're going to pass it into our handler function and we can use some type hinting here so that FastAPI knows which type to expect from that path parameter. So a band ID, if we look at the list above, this is an integer, it's a whole number, so we can use the int data type here and we're going to change the name of this endpoint. Because we're fetching a single band, I'm going to use the name band for this function. Now the logic for this function is going to change. What we're going to do is we're going to take the band ID that's coming from the URL and we're going to search through this list and try and find the dictionary that contains the ID that matches that ID. And if we find that, we're going to return that dictionary as JSON data. But if we don't find it, we want to return a 404 not found status code. So let's now see how to do that in FastAPI. First of all, let's search through the list in order to find the band. So let's create a variable here called band and we're going to use Python built-in next function that can take two arguments. The first one is an iterable. And what we're going to do in that is we're going to search through this list and we're going to try and find a band that has that ID. So we're going to try and find the band for each band in that bands list that we have where the ID is equal to the ID that's passed in. So let's check that dictionary's ID and check if it's equal to the band ID that we're getting here 
from the URL. And the second parameter that we can use in the next function is the default value that we want to use if we don't find an item in that iterator. So I'm just gonna use none. Let's say that if we don't have a band where the ID matches what's in the URL, we're just going to default that to none. What we can do in the next line is we can check if the band is none. And if it's none, what we're gonna do is we're going to return a status code of 404 not found. So we'll deal with that logic in a second, but if we do find the band, we can just return it and that's gonna convert that band dictionary, let's say for ID three to JSON data and return that to our client. Now what we need to do if we have a 404 not found is we need to import the HTTP exception class from FastAPI. And we're gonna copy the name of that and we're gonna go down to the if block here and I'm gonna remove this pass statement. What we're gonna do if we don't find the band is we're going to raise that HTTP exception and we're going to pass the status code parameter in and we're gonna set that equal to 404. And as well as the status code, we can pass a detail parameter and I'm gonna set that to a message band not found. So just to go over what's going on in this endpoint, we try and find the band by the ID that's coming from the URL. If we don't find it, we're raising the HTTP exception with a status code of 404. But if we do find the band, we can return that dictionary, which will then be converted by FastAPI to JSON data. Let's go back to the browser and we're going to test this out here. We have the list endpoint. I'm going to add an ID in the path. Let's say the ID one here in the URL and we're getting an internal server error and that's because of a mistake that I've made. If you look at this function, try and understand why that mistake might have happened and you can pause the video if you want to do that. But what's actually happened here, what's went wrong is that we haven't changed the return type for this handler function. Beforehand, this was an about page, it just returned a string. What we're returning now is a Python dictionary. If we save that and go back to this page and refresh the page, we now get back that single item for the kinks. And if we change the ID in the URL, for example, to slash three, we get the band with the ID of three. But if we change it to something that doesn't exist, then we get back the band not found. And if you look at the terminal in VS Code, you can see the status code here, that 404 not found status code that we're raising from this HTTP exception. Now, before we move on, let's also see the documentation for these two endpoints. If we go to the slash docs URL, you can see the Swagger documentation here. And you can see the two endpoints and also the path parameter in that second one. And if you go to slash bands, you can see the sample response here. It's a 200 status code with a list of dictionaries. We don't know much more than that at the moment in terms of the schema of that return data. When we add Pydantic, we'll see more information about that. And we also have the second endpoint for the band ID. And you can see the path parameters section here, it tells you that we require an ID for this particular endpoint. And we also get type information that that should be an integer. And if we scroll down, we can see the successful response code of 200 with a single object for the particular band that's being returned. But we also have an alternative status code of 422. And that's a validation error that we'll get if we provide the wrong data type in the path parameter. So let's see an example of that now. If we go back to the URL here, and if we change this to something that cannot be converted to an integer, or it's just not an integer, for example, a random piece of text, we get back this particular error. And we can see the message here that the input should be a valid integer but we're unable to parse the string as an integer. And if we go back to the terminal here, you can see we get the error code of 422, and that stands for unprocessable entity. And that's what this validation error is in the documentation here. That happens when we use a path parameter that cannot be converted to the correct type. Now we can also see in the documentation our HTTP validation error is available here as well. So potentially from this band ID endpoint, we might get that HTTP exception. Now because our path parameter has a type hint, FastAPI actually gives you that built-in data validation in your API routes. And those type hints also add context to the Swagger documentation that's generated for that API endpoint. Now, if we want to customize the return status code, let's say for some reason that we don't want to return a 200 code, what we can do is we can pass an argument to the decorator function. So after we specify the path, what we can do is we can pass a status code and we can set that equal to any HTTP status code that we want. So for example, randomly, I'm gonna select 206. If we go back to the documentation here, what you can see is that has been updated and it tells our clients that we now expect to return a 206 response. And we can actually see that if we go to the page here. So if I go to bands slash three and we go back to the terminal, 
you can see we get the 206 partial content response. So it's possible in the decorator itself to actually change the status code that you're going to get back. Let's change that back to 200, which is actually the default, so we can just remove it. And we're going to move on to the last part of this video. Now, if we use a path parameter like this and we type into it as an integer, that means that any valid integer can be accepted in this path parameter. Sometimes we might want to limit the possible values that can be used in the path parameter. So we're going to create an example now. We're going to create an endpoint where we have in the path parameter the genre, and that endpoint is going to allow us to fetch all of the bands for a given genre. So let's start simple and go down and define a new handler function. It's going to be taking a get request, so we'll use the app.get decorator, and we're going to say the root is bands slash genre, and then we'll use a path parameter and set the genre here here as the name of that parameter. We can then define the function and let's say the function is called bands for genre and that's going to take that path parameter as an argument and for now we're just going to let that be any string and we want this function to return a list of all of the bands that are matching that particular genre. So the return type is a list of dictionaries and what we're going to do is we're going to search this list for bands that match the genre that's passed in as a path parameter. So let's go down and define that logic now. We're going to return a list comprehension in Python. And for each band B in the list of bands, what we're going to do is we're going to check the genre of that band. So we can get the key of the genre from that dictionary, and then we can convert that to lowercase. And then we're going to check if that's equal to the lowercase genre that's passed in as a path parameter. So for example, if in the URL we have a genre that's equal to rock, what's going to happen is it's going to get lowercase and we're going to search through this list of bands and find all bands where the genre is equal to rock and it's going to lowercase all of those values to make this a case insensitive search. So let's now save this file and we're going to go back to the browser and I'm going to go to an endpoint here, slash bands slash genre and let's specify the genre of rock music. Now there's only a single band in the list that has the genre of rock music and that's the top one here. So we get back that single record when we go to that endpoint for the kinks. And if we change this to electronic, for example, we get back that single record. Now something you might want to do is limit the possible genres that can be sent to this API. At the moment it takes any string so I can send any rubbish to that API and it's going to return back an empty list which you might think is fine but sometimes this is not going to be ideal. If we go back to VS Code we have here a very simple list of dictionaries and it only contains four items. But let's imagine we're doing this search over a massive database with tens of millions of rows. We don't want to do a full table scan every time someone sends any garbage to the back end. We might want to immediately validate the genre that's being sent and say that if it's not in a predefined list, we're not going to then go to the database and do that full table scan. This can really reduce the load that's on our database servers, for example, and it can improve the efficiency of our applications. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to the top and just above the band list, what I'm going to do is define a Python enum. So from the enum module in Python, let's import the enum class and we can then define a class that we're going to call genre URL choices. And that's going to inherit from Python's enum type. And within that enum, I'm going to define four choices, one for rock music, one for electronic, one for metal, and one for hip hop. And actually, I'm going to change the band slow dive here to Black Sabbath, and we're going to make that genre of metal. Now notice here that the values in the enum are lowercase, whereas the first letter of the values in the dictionary is uppercase. And the reason for that is that when we go to the URL and we search for a particular genre, let's say rock music, if we capitalize the R, it's just going to get converted to lowercase anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this endpoint here will only accept one of those predefined values that we have in the enum class. So let's go down to this endpoint and rather than type hinting the genre in the path parameter as a string, we're going to make it one of those genre URL choices instead. And then within the handler function, we need to change the logic here a little bit. So what we have now is an enum. To get the value of that enum, we can use the genre.value. So whenever you have a field in an enum in Python, if you need to get the actual value underlying that field, you can use the dot value property. So let's now save this and go back to the browser. If we search for the rock bands, we still get back that single band and same for electronic, we get back Aphex Twin. But if I search for a value that's not in that enum, for example, jazz, we're getting back this error message and that's telling us that the input should be rock, electronic, metal or hip hop. 
So we get some data validation going on as to this path parameter that we have in the URL. And if we go back to the Swagger documentation, you can see we now have this new endpoint. And if we look at the path parameter here for the genre, you can see the available values are appearing in this API documentation. So that again is telling the consumers of our API that if they're sending a request to this URL, they need to use one of those values as the genre. And that's very handy, as I said, if you want to validate what's being sent to your API before you potentially perform something like a full table scan of a large database table, this can improve efficiency and improve performance in your application. So that's all that I wanted to show in this video. We are going to refactor this URL here. Rather than hard coding the genre in the URL, we can move that to something called a query parameter. We'll do that in a future video, but for now, that's all I wanted to show. We've seen how to use path parameters in FastAPI, and we've also seen how we can use type hints to constrain the values that are passed to those path parameters. And we've also seen in this video the HTTP exception class, and we can raise that HTTP exception in our endpoints with particular status codes depending on what's gone wrong. So thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.